That darn ass blossom. All right, what's going on, you guys? It's your boy Three Stacks in this thing, baby. And uh, today I'm coming at you guys with an update from my side frame deck. Uh, the deck uh, really did get hurt on one of the most recent ban lists. Darn everybody that was playing Omega in a deck that it didn't belong in, man. We just needed that Omega. So I really wanted to revamp this deck. Uh, it's something about it just interests me, man. I just like decks like that that have a control element to them, like a control but combo deck at the same time. And Cyphrams actually do have really cool combos when they're playing around with their field spell. And I like that the deck is extremely, extremely like um interactive and it kind of just counters a lot of play styles and it has a really, really solid uh, like grind game. It's like a really solid control deck. And it's it's one of those decks that just forces the game state to be simplified because if you choose to not enter that game state and play on my temple, I end up plussing so hard by negating your cards and getting out bigger and better monsters than you. It's just a really, really good deck. I think it's very skillful and um, it just doesn't seem to be seeing any play. And I'm actually um, gonna take this build to um, the next regionals that I go to. I'm either going to take this, Mermels, or Hilda Perfection. Those are the three that I'm, like, debating on. But anyways, you guys, let's go ahead and hop into the list. Uh, we'll start off with the, the main deck, of course. That darn Ash Blossom. And speaking of Ash Blossom, we're playing three copies of her. Uh, she's just a really, really generic, universal, awesome hand trap. She's the um the only one, like, that's uh, a member of the sister family that I play three of. And then I play two copies of Ghost Ogre. Um, now, I was uh, debating whether I was going to keep in Veilers, but I felt that as far as monster effect negation goes, that I had a pretty um, already, like I already had that other wraps with my searchable gammas and my infinite impermanences. So I felt that Ogre would give me more versatility in my hand trap lineup to be able to hit threats like um, the Alter Guys Continuous Traps, the Multi Rolls, even Battery Man Solars, the Soul Days, and Summon Sorceress. You know, you name it. Even Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. Heck, like, there's a lot of cards you can hit with her. She's just a really, really uh, decent hand trap. You know, she's, like, not going to win you games or just in turns by herself. But she definitely can help you to simplify the game state. Uh, just kind of going those one-for-one -one exchanges with your opponent can really help you. <clears throat> because all you really need for them to do is just to play Yu-Gi-Oh! In order for your deck, your deck to function. And that's how Cyframes work. If your opponent plays Yu-Gi-Oh! They play with you. And then we have two copies of Gold Reaper and Winter Cherries. Uh, this was gonna be another hand trap too, but I decided to play this and the main reason why I decided to go for the cherries Was actually because I was thinking more and more about my burning abyss matchup And burning abyss would be a really really tough matchup for this deck because like the way that deck functions It can play around a lot of my best plays like for side frames Especially because they can get multiple effects going off in chain links and it can just really get out of control and it's so hard to just kill Dante's and cons let them consistently make them. So I just felt that I would just easily win that matchup just by cherries in the Dante's. And they kind of just try to turbo out Boral Sword and I can just stop them from there. So I just felt like, and I play other targets, but I just felt like I wanted to make sure that the bad matchups that I had main decks, uh, cards in my main deck to kind of solidify that problem. And make sure that I'm not just going to automatically lose by getting paired up by, with a certain deck. And then there's only one ghost spell. This isn't even mine, um, but I definitely, like, if I had more, I would play more. Um, I was thinking more on the lines of a 3, 2, 2, and 2 ratio for all the sisters. Um, I decided the sisters would be the um, hand traps that I played beside the actual cypherms themselves. I mean, Veilers were in mind. Uh, you know, um, actually, Drone Lockbirds were in mind, too. But um, my deck doesn't play fast enough to capitalize on drawing somebody because I could draw them. And then I still have to wait for them to play for my cards to react. So that means I just drilled them. And the same cards I was trying to stop them from drilling, they're just going to play them a turn later because I can't OTK. Um, so I was just like, drill's just not going to work. So um, these are your sisters. I'm going to go ahead and uh, move them up. And uh, next up, we're going to go for the Cyphering cards. Um, I play three copies of Alpha. I actually love this card a lot. Now, it doesn't respond or negate, to it, like, it doesn't negate any cards that your opponent, um, like, commits to their board, but what it does is, um, if your opponent normals or specials a monster, which is a common action in Yu-Gi-Oh!, a lot of us do this, you know, we normal and special summon, it basically can special both itself and a driver from hand deck or grave, and that's how all the Cypherns work, their actions always revolve around them summoning their cells from hand deck or, uh, in the driver from hand deck or grave, and what this card does is it searches a Cyphering card, 
So I like this one. It's a really good starter card. Um, and I play this deck blind second. Like I just always go second with this build. Um, and, and what I like about this is this gives me the access to whatever card I need, whatever combo piece I'm missing, my trap. I can search on my field spell, my gammas, or anything like that. And if somebody's foolish enough to Ash Blossom this, I could chain gamma if I wanted to and just keep it pushing. But I'm really using this just to build tempo more so that the negations that I have are the level two side frames so that I can instantly go into Omega. Because in this deck, when you simplify the game state and you drop an Omega and you're using this trap constantly bringing it back, like you start over, um, just overcoming your opponent. You start kind of out resourcing them and you're still continuing to rip cards out their hand, negate their best plays. And you just play beat down and you just kind of like pseudo helmet mode. The card's a really good starter card indeed. And then next up, we have three copies of Cyphering Gear Gamma. Now, this card is really powerful against all the combo decks. It's really strong in the Altergeist matchup too, believe it or not. Being able to negate Multifaker when he's being revealed in his hand can really put you ahead in the game. Because then you can make a card like Scrap Dragon and can finish picking off their back rows. In the Altergeist matchup, um, in the Sky Striker matchup, it helps out a lot. Like if they try to tag out Ray, you can negate her. Uh, negate her effect bring out gamma and then you can make whatever synchro you want depending on the situation uh, It's really really strong against dark warriors and against thunder dragons like against thunder dragons This can stop their turn like you can negate any of their power plays like anything at all, all any of the thunder dragons that are relevant like roar um, Dark hawk you negate any of them. They're just gonna pass turn like especially if you negate their hawk like if they can't get an effect that discards they can't make colossus and they just pass turn like it's just it's really really strong and there's so many other interactions and on your turn like when you're trying to like make power plays like foolish uh like if you activate foolish or tribute you know um her for cost and like they call by the grave the um the lilith or they try to ash her foolish like you can punish them with this or the next card that i'm showing you which is three copies of cyframe gear delta now delta is really op um and the reason why is because it's like the only hand trap that i know of that can negate the activation of a spell on turn zero that's not one of the level two heralds and th th so this card is like really in a class of its own um, because like i'm blind seconding with this deck right but the thing is side frames are actually supposed to be played going first because they want to set up with their field spell they want to make plays and synchro on your turn and i really am doing that literally to like force my opponent make me go first but like just having a card like this and a going second strategy raises the ceiling of the deck because now you can actually just negate anything like you have your sisters they can respond to any cards you know basically like this can negate extender spells you know cherry simplifies the game state ogre hits a lot of cards that this deck can be like struggling against even if it's just big beaters just being able to ogre them ash is amazing and then you have a card that just negates soul charges and brilliant fusions and monster reborns twin twisters widow anchors engages you name it like this card can negate cards that ash blossom can negate like it's just so powerful you guys like it, it's so good and so many decks like it's just ridiculous like these two right here are the best side frames to use to interact on your opponent's turn the spell negator and then the, the uh, monster negator and then next up the side frame that keeps you alive when people think that they know how to play around side frames and they try to just start poking and not commit any actions you punish them with beta and you either black rolls their field or you make a Zeta and you force them to start playing Yu-Gi-Oh again or they're going to get just beat down. Um, so I personally am a firm believer in three. I see a lot of lists, um, especially recently, like playing one and two. I think that's absolutely incorrect. This is one of the cards that allows you to come back when people think that they're just going to win. Because a lot of people have this strange mindset where they think, oh, in order to be side frames, I'm just going to do, do nothing. Well, eventually you're going to have to start doing something. And the problem with doing nothing while you're slow playing is I'm searching out so many in the gates, but by the time you're ready to start playing Yu-Gi-Oh, it's not going to be like, you're not going to be able to. And this card really helps you with that. Because like one of the cheesiest things ever is for a Sky Striker player to just summon Hayate and think they're going to win just by continually attacking directly. You punish them with beta and you make a card that they literally can't even Widow Anchor because you can banish their card and it to dodge the Widow Anchor. So like this card's really good. Black Rose and your opponent at the end of their battle phase, nuts. Like it's just, it's a really good card, you guys. It's like the Battle Fader slash Valkyrius on steroids. Then we have three copies of Driver. Driver is a necessary evil. It's it's a brick. It's a vanilla, but it has multi-purpose because it's not just to combo off with them. 
you can actually use it and it synergizes really well with the field spell if there's any monsters that your monsters can't get over you can use the field spell discard this and give them a surplus of 2500 attack which really helps you to push over um, a lot of monsters in today's metagame in fact i can't really think of any meta relevant monsters whose attacks higher than 5000 and your max cap is going to be at 53 that's the highest you can get to with the assistance of the field spell I also play one multi-threader. I think it's absolutely to correct to at least play one of your lists because there are multiple interactions that this has, like if they try to ghost over your field spell, but the most clutch interaction with this is the alpha play where you they basically are going off, like combo decks are committing so much and you can just reveal alpha whenever you're ready on one of their summons, summon him, search multi-threader and resolve the field spell to summon black rose and then you pitch multi-threader, black rose will cure their whole field and then your field spell will be protected because of multi-threader. And then if they play anything, you can still get out your other side frames and do more synchro plays. But it puts them so far behind that you just basically got a free Black Rose for no reason at all. And can still negate their cards. And um, one of the um, supplements for the main issue with this deck, like where people just try to slow play you. And just like try to not commit. You want to play cards like Pancreatops and Beta so that you can put pressure on them and force them to either play Yu-Gi-Oh! or die. And that's why I really like Pancreatops um, because it's a huge monster. It's a threat that you have to activate card effects to get over. You have to find your way uh, uh, to maneuver around this. It helps against back row decks because like hand traps don't stop back row. So Alter Guy setting five and passing, hand traps aren't going to solve that problem. But a Pancreatops well-timed will as well as like Gamma for the Multifaker and other interactions and like delta for like you know twin twisters and stuff like that really helps but pancreatops is like the pressure card that you really need and i like that he's a huge beater that also gets itself off the field so that you can still play the way cyframes are comfortable being played um so yeah pancreatops is just a really really good choice for this list i like them wouldn't change them um i i can already tell like that once i start playing this deck more that pancreatops is going to end up being like an mvp of the whole deck and then I played two copies of Lilith, the Lady of Lament. Now, this was going to be Terraforming's, but I felt that she was better than Terraforming because she's way more flexible. She can get my Metaverses, which can get me my Field Spell. But in addition to that, she can get me my Evenly Matches and my Infinite Impermanence. And I felt this is basically Field Presence. I can get damage on board if I needed to. It's a quick effect that dodges Widow Anchors. It gets me my field spell anyways, and it searches out my negates, and it searches out a win condition evenly matched. So I was just like, dude, this card is just too good. Like, I can literally, like, tag this out whenever I want to, reveal three evenly, set them, pass turn, and if my opponent doesn't kill me, I evenly them anyways. Like, it's just like, it's kind of like a looming threat, basically. Like, it's just a, it's a good card, man, and I really like her a lot. So that's the monster count. It's pretty huge. Um, like you're just these are all hand traps like they just all interact with your opponent's actions uh, There's a ciphering for every action for a normal special a Spell a trap a monster and an attack declaration. They pretty much have an, uh, a ciphering for every action that your opponent can make so Basically if your opponent decides to play Yu-Gi-Oh's you you can play ciphering's uh, so next up for the spells in the deck we have three copies of ciphering circuit uh, the field spell is really like the bread and butter play of the deck. This is how you can um, accrue field presence without like basically resolving the cyframes on your turn. Because the only time you can really synchro summon on your turn is if you're resolving the cyframes. And that's really difficult because your opponent has to be making plays and doing actions that meet the requirement of the specific cyframes you have in your hand. So that can kind of hurt. So having the field spell to make the synchro plays in your opponent turn like really helps like this is the main way that cyframes can even play is because of the field spell like just being able to synchro on their turn interact with them get out your 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 field presence apply pressure to the board with omega omega is just so broken in this deck just a negate with the follow-up rip a card out of your hand is so good so the field spell is nuts you play three because it's really important and then we have three copies of foolish barrel goods it searches out your whole deck the trap searches any ciphering card except for itself, and this is like just three rotas for any ciphering card. Then uh, for our traps, we play uh, three copies of infinite and permanence and three evenly matched because I'm going second with this deck. And like I told you guys, I'm literally going second so that they can start forcing me to go first because ciframes is way, way better played going first. And the thing is, people don't know that. So like they'll make you go first because they see that you have all this hate 
for going second. Like all these hand traps and evenly matched, and they're literally going to counter side. They're gonna side to go second. They're gonna make you go first, like you know, thinking that they're gonna outmaneuver you or like outwit you, and you're gonna keep your deck exactly how it is, and you're still gonna play. So I, I just really like the going second strategy with the cypherns. I felt that it was a counter to a lot of common mindsets. And I still have a side deck for going first, even if they really wanted to try to like mind rape me, it's not gonna work. And then we have three copies of Metaverse. Metaverse is another way to get your field spell. Also playing three of this makes your Lilith just a one card that gets straight to your field spell. And then the Cyframe Overload is an amazing card. This card is so good, you guys. This can just easily deal with like anything that's in your way, especially big beaters. Like it outs all the Boros. It, it, it outs like the biggest and best link monsters. I mean, dude, like this card outs like all the Thunder Dragon monsters. Uh, like you can just slowly grind with Sky Strikers and you can just banish a copy of their, like just keep banishing copies of their links until they run out of them. Like it's just so good uh, it, it, against Dark Warriors. I mean, like, dude, like just, just like banish Rongo if they don't make it correctly. Banish Gossip Soul, banish Summon Sorceress. Banish these sold. It banishes cards face down. And face down banish cards can only be interacted so far with Necroface and Cypher and Lord Omega. So it kind of just takes the card out of the game. I really like it. It capitalizes off of um, me not having my field spell at times. So like if I reveal a Cypher and negate a card and they're going to be banished anyways, I might as well capitalize off of them by using the trap to get more interactions on my opponent's turn. So yeah, I played two. Um, three can come up and, you know, sometimes it's best to play three, but I felt that this was one of the cards that I could comfortably cut because it is searchable through my alpha and alpha is actually funny thing searchable through foolish goods by dumping this. So that's the main deck. Uh, then we have the side deck. Uh, the side deck is three Thunder King Ryles. This goes in tandem to what I said about Pancreatops where you just need bodies and you need pressure because, uh, you're I, like, dude. I've played Cyframes, and I know exactly how people try to counter this deck. I know exactly how, if you're a good player, the way that you should play against Cyframes, I counter to that, and I force you to play by summoning cards like this and Pancreatops, where you have to play Yu-Gi-Oh! to interact with them. And this card is a really, really good problem solver in any matchup. It just happens to be able to, like, stop searching, which is really good. This is why Thunder Dragons are so good. And then just negating any summons. It's, just, it's such a good card. Clearing your field... So you can keep playing your Cyphering cards. And then I play two Epsilons. Uh, Epsilon's going to help you in the Altergeist matchup. Just negating the activation of their traps. Destroying them. And then summoning a Scrap Dragon to bait another trap. So you took out two traps with one card. And that's really, really good in a simplified game state to out-resource them. And then we have three copies of Mind Over Matter. Um, since, like, most people are always going to make me go first. And, of course, they are because they just see, like, I literally have, like, 17, 18 hand traps. And evenly matches. They don't want to deal with it. So when you're going first, you play this. This also helps when you have like side frames that are looming on the field and you don't have your field spell for whatever reason. You can negate cards with them and then use this to tribute your driver to negate another card. That way driver goes to the grave so it won't get banished during the end phase because like you need your drivers to play. So like this card has a lot of utility and it's just really, really good. It's a solemn judgment that's not once per turn. And you can have this plus your side frame trap, all your hand traps in your side frames. You have a lot of interaction and negations. And then we have three copies of Goals and Match. It's better than Rivalry. Rivalry doesn't beat Altergeist. It doesn't beat Sky Strikers. It doesn't beat um, Thunder Dragons. It doesn't really slow down Dark Warriors. They can still summon their Phantom Knight Link and, and, and uh, Rongo. And just, you know, it just really doesn't stop much. But Goals and Match, on the other hand, stops a lot of those decks. So I just like it. And then we have uh, three Sanctums and one Scythe. Um, this really helps me getting pressure, too. And it's really good going first against, like, B.A., other decks like that, just put the pressure on them, flip the scythe, lock them out their extra deck. And uh, you normally do that after you're resolving like scythe frames to um, synchro summon. So you kind of do the scythe at the right timing and then it'll allow you to get the, the damage on board because all your scythe frames will come back on the next standby and you can just OTK. So the extra deck is a uh, one Omega, man, God save him. Like, can he come back at three? And then we have one Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend. This is really for in a match procedures. Um, I don't have Psychic Life Transfer, I think her name is, but I need her and I need a couple other Psychic Synchros. We have Scrap Dragon and MVP. This card is really good under pressure. Epsilon Negated Trap. Scrap Dragon pop another one. Uh, for, you know, like other decks, like Negate a Monster Effect, make Scrap Dragon pop another card. Clear your field. Keep playing Psyframes. Stardust Dragon for those matchups when it actually really does matter. 
and then we have three copies of Zeta. Zeta is just really, really good because he's able to keep uh, clearing himself off the field. He dodges Widow Anchors. He dodges a lot of targeting effects. Um, and it's really, really cool because you can interact with Thunder Dragons where you just keep banishing them off the field so that they can't kill you. And uh, when he comes back on your turn, you can use the field spell to attack over them. And they won't die, but you can keep putting in damage and they won't be able to get rid of him because he can continue banishing himself and their cards. And it's really good against Sky Strikers too because the funny thing is when you banish their Link monster, it returns to the main monster zone. So even if Ray comes off from Grave and they link into another card, they're getting a monster in the main monster zone, which really slows them down and they have to waste their resources to get it out the main monster zone so that they can play Sky Strikers. So don't underestimate the power of Zeta. And he happens to have like a better graveyard effect than Omega. He returns himself and adds a Cyphering card from Grave to Hand. That helps you in the grind game. Then we have Double Black Rose because you're making this on your opponent's turn very, very frequently. Even though Omega can put it back, the problem is Omega's at one. And a lot of times you're putting other cards back. Then we have one Don Dragster. This is really if you're grinding against Sky Strikers and you're one negate away from your push for game next turn. You make this on their turn after you're done with your last pushes and then the Zetas come back, the Omega comes back. Then you can attack for game knowing that you have the negate for the uh, the Widow Anchor, which is really, really good. Uh, now for the Chase target, Summon Sorceress, Isolde, uh, Kagari, Hextia, and Dante. These are the Chase targets. Um, I wanted to play much more since I'm maining Cherry. You always want to play enough targets so that it's not dead in certain matchups. So, so far, Cherry's is going to be dead in the Thunder Dragon matchup. But other than that, you have everything else that you need. You're equipped. The deck has all the tools that it needs to com combat the meta. And it's just a really, really solid choice if you just like are a player like me who, who, who likes playing these kinds of decks. Uh, this is definitely something that you'll enjoy. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching the profile. I appreciate you guys for taking time out of your day. God bless you guys. Uh, have a beautiful day. Make good choices. Don't your brain cells. And uh, you'll be hearing from me soon. Peace.